This is Lauren Kimball, and today I'm going to go over how to bring your traditional paper animation, bring it into Toon Boom, and digitize it so that you can play it back as a movie file. So I don't know where everybody's knowledge base is on this. Maybe you are already familiar with Toon Boom and you just want to get to the paper let you know importing side of things. Um, if you click on the actual YouTube link, wherever this video might be, maybe you're playing it as an embedded file. So uh, if you go to the actual YouTube page and you click on the description, you'll find timestamps at the bottom so you can skip to whatever section you need. I'm going to go through everything, starting with how to get a hold of Toon Boom and what version to pick. All right, so I'm going to start by going to the Toon Boom website. Now with Toon Boom, there are three software packages. You've got Harmony, Storyboard Pro, and Producer, and we want Harmony. So Harmony is their animation software, and they have three versions of this software. If we scroll down, you'll see these descriptions. You've got Essentials, Advanced, and Premium. Now I'm going to be using Essentials because that is what I teach in the classroom, and it's the most cost-effective for my students. Premium, on the other hand, you might want to consider if you are maybe a TV paint user and you like having the bitmap cleanup tools as opposed to just vector and you like that peg registry. I don't think advanced has the peg registry. I know for a fact premium does. So what that is is when you're vectorizing your images and bringing them into Toon Boom, um, you have an option to vectorize and under the vectorizing settings you have what's called optical registry and you can activate that, tell Toon Boom where your pegs are, are they at the top, or are they at the bottom, and Toon Boom, while it's vectorizing your images, is going to hunt for those pegs and line them up for you beautifully. So if you want that, you're going to want to go to Premium. For Essentials, it's just going to be basically taking your scans into Toon Boom. Um, okay, so we'll address this again in a little bit. Now let's say you know what version you want to get. You can go ahead and click on Try for Free. What's really nice is that Toon Boom comes with a 21 day free trial that you can um, activate for each version. So let's say you run out the clock on your essentials license, you can try the advanced license and then you can try the premium license. So you, know, you can go ahead and try every version and see which one you like the best before you purchase one. Um, I, again, I'm doing essentials because that's the most cost effective version. However, one more thing I might mention, if you are either an educator or a student, you can scroll to the very bottom of the page and you'll find that there's an education section and you can click whether you're a student or a teacher, it's the same, it's the same deal. You click on that and you're able to use your student email to purchase a version of Harmony at a discounted rate. So you can do $51 a year or if you use this little slider here, you can do $6.15 a month. Now, unlike Adobe, you won't be penalized for dropping out of your subscription early. So there's no, uh, like like it says right here, no annual commitments. So I, I really appreciate that. Toon Boom's a great company, and I get along really well with their, with their help team. So I'm not being endorsed. I just like them. All right. So once you've got a copy of Toon Boom, and again, I'm going to be using Toon Boom, um, Toon Boom Essentials. I'm going to go ahead and open it here on my desktop. All right, so this screen is going to pop up it's for creating a new scene. I'm gonna go ahead and name this Ball Bounce, and I'm gonna go ahead and save it to my desktop. Now I'm gonna choose my camera size. There's quite a few options here. The ones we're gonna to wanna to pick are that 16 by nine ratio, which is what you're gonna get with the HD TV. And they've got 24 frames, 25, 24, etc. So I'm gonna go with, um, I'm gonna go with 720. Now 1080 and 720, these are basically the same thing except this one's going to be bigger so if you want a slightly smaller file size go with the 720 um, and it's going to set your 16 by 9 aspect ratio and it's going to set your frame rate to 24 and click create all right so I'm going to start by going up to windows and restore default workspace so that my workspace looks like your workspace all right so first thing to note about Toon Boom is this big viewer um, stage right here. If you notice off to the right and the left, you'll notice this very thin line that represents your camera view. Like that's the bounding box for your camera. And you can zoom out by pressing one and two. So it's a little hard to see still, but now that I'm zoomed out using one, so one zooms out and two zooms in, you can kind of see the, the outline a little bit clearer. Now something I like to do 
is I like to go over here, see where this little light bulb is? If you go over two buttons, this is your camera gate. So that darkens everything outside of your camera's focus and that just makes everything easier to navigate. Now, if you open up Toon Boom and you maybe accidentally clicked on the drawing tab, you'll see that everything is white. Maybe in the drawing view, you don't have to worry about the camera until later. Um, I'm gonna go back to camera view though because I do wanna see this camera view. All right, so now that we have kind of got things set up in Toon Boom. I'm gonna go ahead and start importing the images. Now when I scan, I use a flatbed scanner and here is a picture of my setup. As you can see, it's a, it's a large scanner so that it can take in the 12 field, um, the larger 12 field paper. And I've used these little stickies to basically fix this pegboard to my scanner so that all my images are automatically loaded. So there are other options with this. If you had a rapid feed scanner and you had Toon Boom Premium, you could just rapid fire scan things and then ask the pegs to line up wherever they're crooked. Um, but if you're like me and you have this kind of scanner, then you're going to end up with, let me open my scans folder, an output like this. So here are my drawings for the ball bounce and they are all lined up nicely. And um, the only other thing I would say once you have this scanned is I would recommend naming them. Now you can go into your scanner settings and set up whatever prefix you want. I, and because there are only five drawings, I just manually renamed them. But it's a good idea to have a consistent naming convention. So in this case, frame one, two, three, four, five. If I had, um, if I had more than like nine drawings, I'd probably put zero in front so that um, the name, the numbering continues to remain consistent. Like when you go to 10 and I have a frame one, that 10 is going to jump between one and two if I don't have a zero buffering it. It's so just a little fun fact that I'd throw in there. All right, so I've got frames one through five here and they're in my scanner folder. Let's bring them into Toon Boom. So I can push this button right here, which imports image, or I can go file, import images. All right, I'm gonna to go to browse and I'm gonna click on my, I'm just gonna highlight all my frames that I wanna bring in and press open. Now, in Toon Boom Essentials, you have two options. Um, you've got your layers options and your vectorization options. I'm not gonna vectorize these, I don't need to. I'm just going to straight up bring them in as bitmap, as raster images. I'm gonna, cre it creates a new layer by default and it's going to name it whatever the first file is named but I can change it to something more custom. So I'm gonna call it ball bounce. So it's my ball bounce layer. And then I'm gonna press okay. And there it is, there is my ball bounce. Now by default, you typically have this black mouse up here at the very top, that's your select tool. Um, and you're gonna to wanna to try to select, but you're gonna find that nothing works. You can't select this image. Um, two reasons, one, you're on the wrong layer. And two, even if you're on the right layer, you're not gonna find that you can't use it. So. Uh, first things first, I'm going to get rid of this drawing layer. This drawing layer is here by default. I'm just going to delete it. And then I'm going to grab my ball bounce layer. And um, in order to move a bitmap, so drawing objects are vector objects. Uh, image objects are, I'm oh, sorry, did I say that right? Let me try that again. Uh, drawing objects, which when the first layer that I deleted, so if I press undo, this has that little square, circle, and triangle on it. That's a vector. So I would be drawing using vector tools. And then this is an image layer, it's bitmap. So I can't use my drawing tools, my vector tools on it. So in order to move this and adjust this, I need to use my transform tool and that's located right here to the left of my screen. Now, very important, before you do anything, you need to click on this little yellow guy and you need to turn him off. Now, what is he? He is basically an auto key. So Toon Boom is capable of two types of animation, hand-drawn frame to frame. It can also do keyable animation, kind of like what you'd see in Flash or in Maya, where you can set a key and Toon Boom can auto tween things for you. And if I were to move anything with the transform tool, it would start keying. So to avoid that, I turn him off, okay? All right, so let's discuss how to move this. If I ha have the transform tool selected, and I hover my mouse in the corner, you'll see that this double arrow appears and I can rotate my image. And if I hold down shift, it rotates in increments of 15 degrees. 
Okay, and you'll find that if I go in my timeline, it has rotated all of my drawings. So I don't have to do this like one at a time. All right, so now if I hover a little closer to my bounding box, you'll see this double-headed arrow. And this double-headed arrow allows me to scale my image. Now you see it's very um, wonky, so I'm gonna press undo. If I want to scale this and maintain my constraint, I have to hold down shift, much like in Photoshop, how Photoshop used to be. I think they switched it. All right, and then I can move this so that it, my field guide that I've drawn around the box is matching a little better. I like seeing a little bit of my field guide, so I'm probably not gonna scale it all the way. All right, perfect. So now when I uh, scale, uh, toggle through my animation, everything is fitting just nicely. Now, if you wanna toggle through your animation, it's the greater than, less than keys on, on your keyboard. All right, so let's test the animation. I'm gonna click on the first frame, and I'm gonna click on start. I'm gonna click on the last frame down here in my timeline and stop, and then I'm gonna press play. Now that is really fast, and in fact, if I loop it, which is this circle arrow, it's, it's crazy fast. So a um, couple things I need to do. One is it's stopping here and then jumping back to the beginning. So the way I had animated this was I went one through nine and then I exposed seven, five, and three backwards. So it was a little bit of a cheat. Uh, if you wanna do that, you need to access the X sheet. So I'm gonna go over here to my tool properties. See how there's a library and a top menu? There's a plus sign to the far right of that. I'm gonna click on that plus sign and you'll see all these windows, the plus sign, not the X. Make sure it's the plus sign. You'll see all these windows. And uh, one of the menus here is X sheet. When I click it, you get the little X sheet, simplified, but very much the same thing as what you were filling out traditionally on a paper X sheet. So I got one, two, three, four, and five. I can actually manually turn in four or enter in four, three, and two. So now if I click on this last frame and click stop, so it stops on frame eight, I've got a ball that is cycling, even though it's still cycling too fast. So let's go ahead and now that we've got our frames laid out, let's go ahead and change the exposure rate. So to change the exposure rate, you could go through manually and type in one, one, two, two, three, three, four, four. It's a little bit obnoxious. I'm not gonna do that. Instead, I'm gonna click on the first frame down here in the timeline, hold down shift and click my last frame. And then I'm gonna right click and I'm gonna to go to my exposure options. And you'll see at the bottom of the exposure options set one, two, three, or custom. So I'm gonna set these to two. And so now when we look closer, we can see that each frame has a drawing that's being held for two. Now I'm gonna click on my last drawing. I'm gonna go ahead and click on stop so that the animation stops at 16. So you got these little tiny black bookends. And I'm gonna press play. And now that is more of what I was looking for. Now let's say you want this to cycle a couple of times. Maybe you don't want it, you know, sometimes with the, with the video players, it doesn't always cycle really nicely. Sometimes there's a weird pause or hiccup. So I'm just gonna go ahead and cycle this a few times to be on the safe side. So to do a cycle, I could go to my X sheet and I could manually type things in. Yeah, that's a thing. Here's the easier way. I'm gonna click on my first frame, hold down shift, go to my last frame. I'm gonna right click, and I'm going to go to create cycle. And however many times you wanna cycle it, maybe like five times, and press okay. Now you'll notice that five, you know, five times the, what was it? Um, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, like eight drawings. So um, five times those eight drawings goes further than 60. So if the 60 frames is the default in the timeline, so you can actually grab this little red bookend and drag it out. And oh, there's the end, it ends right on frame 80. So I'm gonna grab this and ask it to stop at 80. And then I'm going to press stop here so that the little playback bookends stretch to the length of my animation and press play. And now we've got a great little ball bounce that is ready to be exported. So let's talk about exporting our animation. So to export an animation, all you have to do is go to File, Export, Movie. And there's gonna be different options depending on if you're on a Mac or a PC. 
So you can just kind of choose what you want. Do you want to do just a quick time movie? Actually, these are all movies. But this one up here has got that nice H.264 uh, compressor, which I really like. So I'm just going to click that. Uh, export range. I'm just going to go ahead and do all because that's everything. But if it were a custom setup, like maybe you wanted to only show 1 through 30, you could click on frames and tell it a very specific, specify a very specific frame range. I'm going to go all, same resolution, everything's good, and OK. Cool. All right, so I'm going to minimize this window. I'm going to right click here. I want to see how big the file is. So the final file is four megabytes. That's not too bad. I'm going to open with QuickTime and check it to make sure it works. Sweet. And now you have a 2D, your paper 2D animation digitized. Hope this was helpful.